The brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. And it's, it's crazy how a kid that wasn't real smart, I was forced to go only internal. External had to go away. The external world had to go away. And living so deep inside myself, it was me in this brain and figuring out how this thing works. And it's so many people are doing exactly that. The supplements, the this, the that. And I agree, it helps. But once you figure out your, your brain, you become unstoppable to almost anything. Yeah, you can't beat death. You can't whatever, whatever. Your brain's amazing. Once you feed it the right conversation, the right mental nutrients, the right mental supplements, the right, the right internal dialogue at the right time with the right hit, with the right proof of what you've done in the past, and you send it right to the right circuit, dude, you're a fucking beast. A beast. But once again, you just can't read about it. You can't sit back and be a theorist. You have to be a fucking practitioner. And in that practice is where that becomes proof positive. And what I'm saying is like, God, like David Goggins, he's blowing my mind. What is this? He's not crazy. And so many people, a lot of people, have listened to me in the right way and they come back and they're like, I'm totally on board. I, it, it happened. It happened. I'm like, It'll keep going, man, if you keep doing it. But that is it, man. There's no sun. There's no glory. There's no carrot. There's no victory. But there is all of it in one. I can't explain it real well to people, man. But what you get the other end is something that you're not, you're always found. You're never lost anymore. Doesn't mean the journey's easy. Doesn't get any easier, but you're always found. I'd learned how to hold myself accountable, and I knew I could take a man's soul in the heat of battle. I had overcome many obstacles and realized that each of those experiences had calloused my mind so thick I could take on any challenge. All of that had made me feel like I dealt with my past demons, but I hadn't. I'd been ignoring them. My memories of abuse at the hands of my father, of all those people who called me, didn't vaporize after a few victories. Those moments were anchored deep in my subconscious. And as a result, my foundation was cracked. In a human being, your character is your foundation. And when you build a bunch of successes and pile up even more failures on a fucked up foundation, the structure that is the self won't be sound. To develop an armored mind, a mindset so calloused and hard that it becomes bulletproof. You need to go to the source of all your fears and insecurities. Most of us sweep our failures and evil secrets under the rug, but when we run into problems, that rug gets lifted up and our darkness reemerges, floods our soul, and influences the decisions which determine our character. My fears were never just about the water and my anxieties toward class 235 weren't about the pain of first phase. They were seeping from the infected wounds I've been walking around with my entire life, and my denial of them amounted to a denial of myself. I was my own worst enemy. It wasn't the world or God or the devil that was out to get me. It was me. I was rejecting my past and therefore rejecting myself. My foundation and my character was defined by self-rejection. All my fears came from that deep-seated uneasiness I carried with being David Goggins because of what I'd gone through. Even after I'd reached a point where I no longer cared about what others thought of me, I still had trouble accepting me. Anyone who is of sound mind and body can sit down and think of 20 things in their life that could have gone differently where maybe they didn't get a fair shake and where they took the path of least resistance. If you're one of the few who acknowledge that, want to callous those wounds and strengthen your character, it's up to you to go back through your past and make peace with yourself by facing those incidents and all of your negative influences and accepting them as weak spots in your own character. Only when you identify and accept your weaknesses will you finally stop running from your past. Then those incidents can be used more efficiently 
as fuel to become better and grow stronger. Right there on mom's couch, as the moon burned its arc in the night sky, I faced down my demons. I faced myself. I couldn't run from my dad anymore. I had to accept that he was part of me and that his lying, cheating character influenced me more than I cared to admit. Before that night, I used to tell people that my father had died rather than tell the truth about where I came from. Even in the seals, I trotted out that lie. I knew why. When you get beat up, you don't want to acknowledge getting your ass kicked. It doesn't make you feel very manly. So the easiest thing to do is forget about it and move on. Pretend it never happened. Not anymore. Going forward, it became very important for me to rehash my life because when you examine your experiences with a fine tooth comb and see where your issues come from, you can find strength in enduring pain and abuse. By accepting Trunus Goggins as part of me, I was free to use where I came from as fuel. I realized that each episode of child abuse that could have killed me made me tough as hell and as sharp as a samurai's blade. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality and that's why so many people are lost when I start talking. You have the right. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior and I would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, oh, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're gonna die. It's like being a SEAL, you train with live ammo. You jump out of an airplane, every, 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 everything you do, you could die. So to be a warrior, why people don't understand me, I'm glad you don't understand me. Merry Christmas, good on you. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. A whole different mindset to know that there's a great chance I may not be in the military. Like I was in for 21 years. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I'm alive, able to talk to you, able to still run. But when you sign up on that dotted line to be a, like a SEAL, your mentality changes. I may not live. You got to accept that. And that's the mentality you have. I remembered as a kid, no matter how f***ed up our life was, my mother always figured out a way to stock our damn cookie jar. She'd buy wafers and Oreos, Pepperidge Farm Milanos and chips, Ahoy. And whenever she showed up with a new batch of cookies, she dumped them into one jar. With her permission, we'd get to pick one or two out at a time. It was like a mini treasure hunt. I remember the joy of dropping my fist into that jar, wondering what I'd find. And before I crammed the cookie in my mouth, I always took the time to admire it first, especially when we were broke in Brazil. I'd turn it around in my hand and say my own little prayer of thanks. The feeling of being that kid, locked in a moment of gratitude for a simple gift like a cookie, came back to me. I felt it viscerally, and I used that concept to stuff a new kind of cookie jar. Inside it were all my past victories. Like the time when I had to study three times as hard as anybody else during my senior year in high school just to graduate, that was a cookie. Or when I passed the ASVAB test as a senior and then again to get into books. Two more cookies. I remember dropping over 100 pounds in under three months, conquering my fear of water, graduating buzz at the top of my class, and being named enlisted honor man in Army Ranger School. All those were cookies loaded with chocolate chunks. These weren't mere flashbacks. I wasn't just floating through my memory files. I actually tapped into the emotional state I felt during those victories, and in so doing, accessed my sympathetic nervous system once again. My adrenaline took over. The pain started to fade just enough, and my pace picked up. I began swinging my arms and lengthening my stride. My fractured feet were still a bloody mess, full of blisters, the toenails peeling off almost every toe. But I kept pounding, and soon it was me who was slaloming runners with pained expression as I raced the clock. From then on, the cookie jar became a concept I've employed whenever I need a reminder of who I am and what I'm capable of. We all have a cookie jar inside us because life, being what it is, has always tested us. 
Even if you're feeling low and beat down by life right now, I guarantee you can think of a time or two when you overcame odds and tasted success. It doesn't have to be a big victory either. It can be something small. I know we all want the whole victory today, but when I was teaching myself to read, I would be happy when I could understand every word in a single paragraph. I knew I still had a long way to go to move from a third grade reading level to that of a senior in high school, but even a small win like that was enough to keep me interested in learning and finding more within myself. You don't drop 100 pounds in less than three months without losing five pounds in a week first. Those first five pounds I lost were a small accomplishment. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but at the time it was proof that I could lose weight and that my goal, however improbable, was not impossible. The engine in a rocket ship does not fire without a small spark first. We all need small sparks, small accomplishments in our lives to fuel the big ones. Think of your small accomplishments as kindling. When you want a bonfire, you don't start by lighting a big log. You collect some witch's hair, a small pile of hay, or some dry dead grass. You light that, and then add small sticks and bigger sticks before you feed your tree stump into the blaze. Because it's the small sparks which start small fires that eventually build enough heat to burn the whole forest down. If you don't have any big accomplishments to draw on yet, so be it. Your small victories are your cookies to savor and make sure you do savor them. Yeah, I was hard on myself when I looked in the accountability mirror, but I also praised myself whenever I could claim a small victory because we all need that and very few of us take the time to celebrate our successes. Sure, in the moment we might enjoy them, but do we ever look back on them and feel that win again and again? Maybe that sounds narcissistic to you, but I'm not talking about droning on and bullshitting about the glory days here. I'm not suggesting you crawl up your own ass and bore your friends with all your stories about what a badass you used to be. Nobody wants to hear that shit. I'm talking about utilizing past successes to fuel you to new and bigger ones. Because in the heat of battle, when shit gets real, we need to draw inspiration to push through our own exhaustion, depression, pain, and misery. We need to spark a bunch of small fires to become the mother inferno. But digging into the cookie jar when things are going south takes focus and determination because at first the brain doesn't want to go there. It wants to remind you that you're suffering and that your goal is impossible. It wants to stop you so it can stop the pain. That night in San Diego was the most difficult night of my life, physically. I'd never felt so broken and there were no souls to take. I wasn't competing for a trophy. There was no one standing in my way. All I had to draw on to keep myself going was me. Never pick the easy road. Mm. Never, never. And it always goes back to kind of the hero mentality. Never pick the easy road ever in your life. That is the one road that is doom. It is doom. If you want something like six minute abs, all mm -hmm. these different things, if you want it so fast, mm. you're, you may achieve what you wanted. But you want the permanent fix. The permanent fix comes from the hard road. The hard road gives you permanent results. Mm. The easy road gives you the quick fix. You will go back to where you started on the easy route. That hard route is so permanent that it ends up callousing you everywhere. Everywhere. You keep a six pack forever. You keep, yeah. it. <laughs> you keep it. Because you know the work that goes yeah. into it. Yeah.